welcome back to the channel in the previous video we have understood the basic concept of extreme learning machines and its background information so based upon what we have understood in the previous video in the current video we will discuss the code for running the elm in matlab so as you see here this is a code developed in uh, nanyang technological university singapore which can be downloaded for free the link which is given in the description so here in this video we will try to understand what each line of the code is and how it is functioning so that we can use it for our own application as you see here the first line here represents the function this is this command which we will be using for running the code as you can see here so this is the whole function which we will be using to understand and develop the elm models so whatever the values which are on the left side of the equal to sign are the values which we will be saving while running the code and these values after the name elm are the inputs which will be given into the model for running the code so if we see here the data which we will be giving in a training file testing file what is the type of elm which we want to run either a regression or a classification the number of hidden layers which we want that is hidden neurons which we want the model to use to develop the model and also an activation function so if we go directly to understand this we can see here here a brief explanation of all the types of variables which we will be saving and using is given by the authors so firstly we will talk about what is the type of elm which we will be using there are two types of uh, elms which we can use as it was mentioned here it is either a regression or a classification which we will be inputting into the model during the time of giving the training and testing files we will tell if it is regression we will give a value of 0 here in the elm type or if it is a classification we will give you a value of 1 in the elm type so that we can tell the model what kind of code which it should go and run the model so a simple regression means determining how the changes in the dependent variable are based upon the variations in the explanatory variables like seeing how the independent variables are influencing the dependent variables whereas classification generally represents the other form of grouping of various variables and trying to differentiate between different variables so that is a simple uh, uh, difference between the regression and classification so in the case of developing this uh, code and understanding it we will mostly use a regression function based upon the type of variables we'll be working are mostly on dependent variables and we try to understand their changes so the first step is to determine these uh, regression classification as mentioned earlier we'll put a value of either 0 or 1 so if we go to the next lines we can see that this is the code which is referring to loading of training data set so whatever the name which we give to the data and input it we take it into the code and assign a name of train data so that we can uh, refer to this data as training and test data in the next lines to determine them as testing so these data sets are again further saved as t and tv which represents training data set and testing data set element so these are the lines divide the data into training and testing based upon what we have given and save it to different variables so once we have saved the data the next thing we need to see is what are the type of parameters we are dealing with its length what are the number of neurons we want to use so we already specify here while running the first statement itself we specify what are the number of uh, hidden neurons in it so in the next lines here we see what are the number of neurons we'll be using it and also see what is the num uh, length of the data we are using because we'll be using the length of the data of each element to determine the type of uh, processing we need to do the pre-processing elements and the processing to be done for testing data and training data is based upon the length of the data sets which we give so in the first statement after the elm type is seen as regression based upon this we sort out the data and label various data as the processing of both training data and target data in both testing and training so that we can use these data for training the models so the first step after understanding it is a regression model is to start out the data 
and also assign different number of output neurons. So we do this for both the targets of training and testing as you can see here in the next columns where we are processing the targets of training as well as processing the targets of testing. Based upon the number of output neurons and number of training data sets, we determine the processing targets for both training and testing of the ELM code. So after the processing of uh, the targets of training and testing are done, which generally represents uh, determining the number of uh, elements present in it and what are the kind of uh, matrices they are, they check what are the elements in it and uh, assign different values to them so that they can be used for training or testing targets. So once the data is uh, understood about what are the targets. In the next step, the main details which are required for running the ELM are determined and saved. As we remember from the last video, the main elements that are uh, input weights, bias, activation function and output weights. So in the initial stages, the input weights as you can see here are given as the random values are based upon the number of hidden neurons the number of input neurons so this statement is used for assigning the random input weights initially to understand how the model is predicting the target of training and then later change them accordingly similar to the values of input weights the bias functions are also given as random variable initially to try to understand the differences between the observed target as well as the train target and thereby edges the values so these are the three values which we play with to understand how these uh, input weights and bias are varying and how this value of H can be used for training the data. So if you remember here in the previous video we have already discussed what this H represents. The H here represents the hidden layer output matrix which we obtain based upon the input weights and the values of our targets. So once we have understood the relationship between the input weights and obtained the hidden layer output uh, matrix, the next thing we do is to understand what kind of activation function we are using. So as mentioned again in the previous video, activation function is one of the most important parameter which determines how the understanding of the relationship between the input and target is perceived by the matrix and later given as the prediction. So we see here similar to other uh, matrix activation functions which we have used for other types of neural networks. There are five types of uh, functions which we can use which are sigmoid, sine, hard limit, triangular bias and radial bias. So these are one of the functions which we will be giving during the time of using the first statement of the code to run the model. So here we determine what are the type of activation function we want to use by giving these kind of uh, values there. So once we get these values, the next thing is finding out the output weight. Again, as we can remember in the previous video, we have already seen how the output weight is calculated. It is based upon the hidden uh, layer weight output and the target matrix. So once we have the value of the hidden layer, we just multiply it with the uh, matrix. Here T represents the training value. So these values give us the values of the output uh, weights for, for training the model. So once we get the training, as you can see here, we end the training here. The time taken for training can be given based upon calculating the time spent for going through all the procedures. This time is not important, it just shows how quick or how fast the model was run. The main thing which we need to keep in mind here is the input weights, the hidden layer weights and the output weights we get during the training. So after getting this output weight, we just multiply it with the hidden layer outputs and then we get the actual output of the training data as mentioned here. So once we get the training data, one thing which is already included in this code is finding out the accuracy based upon the root mean square error, where here T represents the original uh, target of the training.
training and y represents the predicted values in training so in this way we get the accuracy of training similar to the procedure followed in training the same procedure is followed for testing following the same steps where instead of using the values of t here we use the values of tv which is the testing data set so following the same procedure we calculate the same variables here and at the end of the day we get ty which is the testing data set obtained after using the values of hidden layers during test and the output weight which we have gotten from this so ty represents the testing value obtained from the code and the testing accuracy can be obtained here using the same root mean square error values so these 100 lines use the same concept which we have discussed earlier in the previous video which is outlined here with a simple four step this simple concept is converted into code by this uh, person from singapore university and is written as this code so this is how you can use the elm code which is freely available for use and develop a model for prediction of any parameter these are the simple steps which we uh, can follow and small understanding of each step can be found as comments in this code and here the important thing is the number of hidden neurons which are needed for developing the model so as we discussed earlier these hidden neurons can be based upon 2n plus 1 based upon the number of variables being n here so let's say you have five number of variables which we are using to develop the model you can start with a hidden number uh, of neurons as 11 and see how the model is running or you can make a for loop outside of this function by creating another command and determine what are the number of hidden neurons at which you are getting a good result so in the next video we will see how we can uh, run this code and develop a prediction using this code so that is it for this video if you have any uh, confusions using this code you can put your questions in the comment box i'll reply to them as soon as possible if you have uh, liked the concept you can give this video a like subscribe to the channel and share it with people whom you think this information can be used.